Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we're going to focus back on our moon missions. We already have our Deimos landing mission on its way and we'll have to do that maneuver while one of our rockets is building. But first let's take a look at our tech tree. We have 961 science to spend and actually what I want more than the science is the upgrade points but I suppose we might as well get this space exploration since it gives us the better landing struts. I don't think we're gonna have it unlocked by the time we can do our moon mission, but we might as well try. So that is something we're unlocking. Uh, 711 points left. Uh, Hydrolox engines, J2s. I don't really want the J2s, but I was sort of hoping that we would unlock better RL10s if we unlock this. So that's the thing. Refined rocketry. Um, Hmm. That's the aerospike. That's the aerospike. That could be interesting, but it's probably going to be very expensive. Uh, 9,000 cost. When you consider that my NK-15s are 770, uh, that's the price of 10 engines. You're talking more than 10 engines you're talking about there. Um, and that's not the unlock cost. That's the actual cost of the part. Uh, somebody mentioned SRBs and strapping on SRBs to the Nico 944. There's absolutely no point in doing that, I think, because the SRBs are going to cost too much. Uh, we haven't unlocked any good SRBs lately. You can see large segmented solids are here. But here, here's the UA-1205 used on the Titan III. That's 8,850 each. And that's more than 10... NK-15s. I, uh, and it provides the thrust of, let's say, three NK-15s. Uh, really, uh, two and a half, uh, three. We'll say three NK-15s at a really low ISP. So each of these provides the thrust of three NK-15s, low ISP, includes the tank and the fuel, obviously. Uh, but it's not worth that. It's not going to be able to compete with the NK-15s. Uh, let's see, uh, one of the... Um, uh, what was mentioned was the like the Atlas boosters. Let's see, larger solid. A lot, there's always larger solids. How about uh, better solids? Um, caster. Well, that's a space shuttle booster. Obviously, that's super expensive. Uh, Nineteen thousand. But I don't uh, see where. Maybe I don't just don't have the part because I knew it was gonna be not used. Also, for some reason, it's not showing up with uh, proce oh, procedural unlocks here. Um, I don't know whether that will give us any... Well, here's a Caster 1. Those are cheap. Uh, those are 360 a apiece. But they provide, oh, about one-eighth the thrust of an NK-15. So you need eight of them to match the NK-15. Yeah, so it's not very cost-efficient at all. The NK-15s are cheaper than SRBs. So, yeah, that's our problem right there. So we'll always use NK-15 boosters. There's no point using anything else. Um, they have really good thrust-to-weight ratio, too. So, well, I, I think we're already unlocking basic solid. Let's take a look at what we're unlocking already. We need to go to construction time. Um, here, uh, landing, basic solids. I mean, I'm going for the solids even though... Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be any good. Landing unlocks in 23 days. Space exploration, I think, was the one with the better landing strut, so let's move that up. But that's 388 days, which is more than the time we have until uh, the July 16th launch of Apollo 11 and the landing on July 20th. Um, we could, I guess, uh, put a lot of upgrade points into that, but let's see. Um, we don't have that much by way of funds. I don't know whether I, I think I want to speed up the build time more than the R&D time because we're going to be building our rockets and I want a chance to do two missions in the time we have left so 180 days let's say uh, not 180 days sorry 120 days um, actually that might be too tight I don't think we can do that anyway I think we only have chan a chance for one mission before uh, that particular deadline in that case, uh, well, we can't finish the technology in time, the uh, what you got, um, space exploration one. 
but we need to unlock much more technology. Well, speaking of that, we could use the funds to buy upgrade points and then speed up the whole process too. And we do have a uh, crewed lunar landing mission here. Duration 1 year, 187 days. Gives us a huge advance, not great on completion, and catastrophic on failure. But we're going to have to try and do this. So let's go ahead. We've picked it up. Now we've got a lot. Now we could speed things up, get a lot. Well, I mean, uh, let, let's go for broke here. So R&D, um, just buy a whole lot of these upgrade points. This is how they did it in Apollo, right? There we go. One science per day. And speed up the build process a bit. I don't know when we get the second build slot. Is there ever going to be a second build slot? I don't know. Um, yeah, well, they, they built rockets pretty fast, too. So let's make sure we can compete. 7.2 build points per second. Okay, well, that's good. Uh, let's try and get rockets to build. Okay, so this is the S4 stage that we were using, but I've decided to put on Nico 1344 so that uh, we have four strap-on boosters, again, NK-15s, because that's the only thing that makes sense. I put parachutes on top to recover them. Hopefully that'll work out all right. And there seems to be a gap here. I rearranged, I rearranged the RCS on the S4 stage a little bit to make it a little bit better. So there's that change. Otherwise, uh, no changes. No changes to capacity. Even with the boosters, uh, because the burn time on the S4 stage is at its max. We can't really add more burn time, otherwise it'll exceed the max time for those engines. So this time we shouldn't use too much of the S4 stage in order to get it to orbit, and I'll leave more for all the activities afterwards. I could add a little bit more RCS fuel, but I didn't think we needed that. I guess I could up the utilization of that tank a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, so we will definitely want to build these. Uh, and I say these because I'm, I was hoping to build more than one, but maybe we don't have that much time. Let's build one first and then follow up with another. Stagger them. So save. We're going to build. Yeah. Oh, it looks like the second one will take 72 days. I guess we had some spare parts. Okay, so here's the Kelly 2 on a Nico 944. It doesn't need any boosters because the Kelly spacecraft is only 37 tons. It's not that heavy. Um, we've made a number of changes. First of all, the suggestion had been uh, to add two decouplers facing different ways in order to in order to make sure that it fell off. Instead, I've opted for a different tactic, which is to assume it's going to stay on and reduce the size of this particular structural part to make sure that we are taking that into account. Um, I think maybe I should make it just a little bit longer. Uh, not that long. So like that. And I've spaced these engines out a little bit further. Um, actually, we could switch the asterisk 2 here. I already made these asterisk 2s. I removed the, the lunar Gemini engines on that stage. We're still using them up here, so we're not completely lacking in Gemini lunar engines. But um, the reason being that the asterisk on the asterisk 2 configuration has 310 seconds specific impulse, giving 23.3 kilonewtons. And it has gimbling. And, of course, unlimited ignitions, so that's nice. Whereas the Advanced Gemini Lander engine has 311 vacuum specific impulse, also pressure fed, also infinite ignitions. Uh, but it's actually heavier despite having half the thrust. It can throttle though, which is nice, but 0 0.072 versus this one's 0 0.068, and that's still 0 0.068. Now this can't throttle, so that's a downside, but uh, it looks better and it gives twice as much thrust per engine and you look at this 300 cost this one each one 450 
So we need twice as many of these to match these, and they cost more each. So obviously we're going to go with the asterisk twos. Now if we change these to asterisk two, which I, I have done, yes, uh, we should be able to reduce the amount of Oh, um, hold on. Does the asterisk 2 use a different fuel mixture? Okay, uh, we should be able to reduce the size of this. I already upped the utilization to make it stouter, shorter, you know. Um, so we used to have uh, lower utilization. I guess we can shrink it to that size. I think around six seconds is nice. I like six sec. Yeah, it's not six seconds. Six minutes is just a nice number to have. Okay, so then we have it like that. Now for this, we can wait until the lander technology is unlocked. I don't know how helpful those little lander legs are going to be, but maybe better than nothing. So, yeah, uh, we'll wait on that. We won't build this just yet. I just wanted to talk about some of the changes I made. Also, I... Oh, we can change the solar panels, I suppose. Uh, is there a point to doing that, though? Uh, that, that, that is Mark II, and this is Mark II as well. So, just these. 0. 0.0117 tons for 270 watts, 500 cost. And then the newer solar panels that I have... here way more by point, uh, si point oh, oh, six tons uh, these are 450 each these are 500 so they're cheaper but I think they take longer to build and 410 watts well let's see 43 days right now it says down there let me take these off uh, still 43 days does give clearance for the ladders, it looks like. But these panels don't retract. I don't think that's... Well, for the lander portion, that might be a problem. For this portion, it's not. This portion, it's not. Uh, for the lander... I don't know. I'd rather have them capable of retracting just in case we have some sort of mishap and we want to save them. So let's keep these over here. All right, so first thing we want to do is complete landing tech in 14 days. So we'll do that. And then after that, we will complete this S4 stage. And we'll queue up the vehicle, the Kelly 2 part of the mission. And then uh, before doing this rocket here, and then we're going to have to turn to our Deimos mission, do that maneuver node. And then once the Kelly 2 is complete, we can launch the missions. So we can't launch this one until it's Kelly 2 is complete because of the boil-off issue. Okay, well I don't have any tweak scale or anything, so this is all I can do with these little landing legs. And I guess we'll move them a little bit further down. Try and get them in line with the engines. I'll let that block float. And so they'll be retracted like that. I don't actually... It, it might not even matter whether they're extended or retract. Well, they do poke out of the fairings a bit. Okay, well I don't know if they're going to make things bounce all over the place or whether it's going to be a good idea. As far as Delta V is concerned, it doesn't change much. So, yeah, they're on now. How heavy are they? Mm, 0.01 tons apiece, so not going to make a huge difference. We're going to save. I hope everything is all right. And build two of these. Okay, so we have an S4 stage on an Eco 1344 waiting in storage. The Kelly 2, the first of our Kelly 2s, will be done in 43 days. Um, we could speed that up a bit, I guess. Uh, we can rush build, but that's costly compared to the cost of the rocket. Uh, but 
maybe we should just focus on the Deimos mission now. So let me time warp. Communication. Ah, well, we do have a minute of signal delay, a minute and six seconds, so gotta take that into consideration. Not really. Smart ASS and all, but... I'll need to turn on the RCS at least. Currently no encounter with Mars, so we're trying to make sure that happens first and foremost. We'll have to cut the main engines well ahead of finishing the maneuver because otherwise the maneuver will wander, Smart ASS will try and follow, and I can't re-engage SAS just yet. Okay, well there is the encounter coming up rapidly. I'm going to use RCS. Just want it in line with Deimos. And really probably rather closer than that. Okay, well, at least that doesn't look like a horrible start. Let me remind myself how much Delta V we have in the in the rest of the stages. I think we packed quite a lot, but let me make sure. Unlock this bit. Well, let's just unlock that bit because the rest is the lander. Let me just see how much this is. 334. So I guess it should be manageable. Let's wait on all these other things and just get into orbit like this. And then the rest should follow, hopefully. So this maneuver is acceptable, I think. And we are going to... And uh, charge seems fine, everything seems fine. So we are going to add this to the alarm clock. Okay, so this is all set. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, it is June 20th, 1969. We have built both parts of our mission, and we are going to roll out the S4 stage. That's five days on that. Our uh, next attempt is already under construction. And this time we do have a contract and we really must fulfill it because we're going to blow our budget otherwise. We have some time to fulfill it, but not a whole lot. Um, I wonder why it's not including that contract here. Hmm, contract. Um, yeah, crude lunar landing, please. Uh, come on. Yeah, that one. There we go. We need to make sure that we do it in 448 days. Okay, S4 has been rolled out. Well, <laughs> here goes nothing. Okay, here we are. Uh, things are sort of stable. Ready? SAS is on. Throttle is up. Well, here we go. Ignition. launch. All 13 engines are are ignited nominally. That's always nice. There is a uh, there is a wiggle to the rocket. Oh, we've lost uh, performance on one engine. Well, that could uh, contribute to a wobble, for sure. The parachutes on them should bring them to less than 3 meters per second on touchdown. So they are very recoverable, as long as they can stand it. Uh, though, we really need to work on our recoverability thing, because it's not very realistic the way it is right now. Should add floats. Should really have the the parachutes at the bottom and the fluids on top, just like the core stage has it. No, we need to test that whole theory out. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. Let's 
set. And they're off. No problem. Getting ready for first stage separation. And set. And set. And ignition. Some of those fairing pieces got caught on that thing. Uh, we have lost one engine on this stage. One of the NK-15Vs has been lost. Fortunately, uh, the burn time for these engines don't isn't scratching the burn limit for them. The rate of burn time for them, I think, is like four minutes. We only burn them for three minutes. So it should be all right. We'll uh, keep the angle up a little bit more now, then. So, so far, uh, one and a half engine losses. We'll call performance losses one half of an engine loss. So, one and a half on this launch. Okay, set. And ignition. Okay, NK-19s have ignited. We are uh, still go for orbit on this stage, which means we don't really need fuel from the RL-10s to do the job. Though we probably want this stage to deorbit instead of uh, going all the way to orbit. So redundancy, we're good. Uh, adding four boosters uh, should increase the capacity of this rocket by quite a lot more than we're testing it out to, uh, to handle. Uh, right now you can see our stage time plus our orbital velocity would bring us to more than 8,300 meters per second and we only need 7,800 so we have a surplus of about 500 meters per second despite the engine troubles that we've had. Let's see about the recovery. Uh, this is the core 5.71 meters per second recovered covered for most of its values. Out of 16,773 we got 16,254 back. Uh, this is one of the boosters. Terminal velocity only 2.35 meters per second so very slow impact. And there um, all but 80 funds recovered. Same for the other boosters. So it's a good deal. We should make those boosters like landable or something. Unfortunately there's no multiple ignitions on these guys but maybe if they add little little side engines or something they could do a whole Falcon landing thing. We need some small relightable kerosene engines. That work well on the surface, obviously. Okay, approaching orbit, getting ready to shut this engine down. Making sure it re enters. That's good enough. And 438 left in that stage. Set. And ignition. First ignition of the RL 10s brings us to orbit. And shut down. 260 by 212. Nine ignitions left in the RL 10s. Let's get the antennae out as a priority. And then the solar panels. Decouple. Off that goes. Okay, docking port is free, and this is all ready to go. Looks good. Recharging and everything. Uh, some boil off on the hydrogen, so let's get going with the other part of the mission. Okay, it is June 30th, and we are about to launch the Kelly 2 spacecraft. We are not going to have Bob and Bill in there. We are going to have 
Um, well, all our pilots are pilot one. I guess we'll have Valentina do it. And then we'll have, um, we'll have Alan as our engineer. Bill hasn't actually gotten any experience or hasn't got enough. Alan is our most experienced engineer, so we'll send Alan. Or we could send two pilots. Um, I don't think that we're going to be needing an engineer. Maybe I'd feel a little bit better with two pilots. No, nah, I don't see any particular reason for that. Engineer it is. Alright, let's launch. Okay, that should be enough. Let's take a look. It's, um, it's over there. Valentin and Alan, ready for launch and ignition. And launch. Okay, it's going up. All nine engines are lit. Uh, we have a condition on one of the engines. Um, it looks like a performance loss. So we'll go a little bit steeper than planned. It's probably because we're reusing all these engines. Let's make that the excuse. Well, we're past the speed of sound. 30 more seconds on the first stage. Okay, first stage separation. And ignition. Whoa, quite a kick there. But we're back. All four engines are lit. NK-15Vs are looking good. Closest approach distance to target, 500 kilometers in closing. Alright, launch escape tower jettison. It is off. Closest approach distance to target 250 kilometers and closing. Five more seconds in this stage. There is some sort of staging mishap here, so let me take care of that. Okay, set. And ignition. Alright, the second stage was fine, and we continue with the third stage. There's a lot of questionableness on this particular staging, so let me correct that. Current distance to the target is 1,200 kilometers. Closest approach distance, 200 kilometers and closing. Looks like our time to closest approach is a lot like our stage time right now, which I suppose is good. Distance to target now 500 kilometers. Closest approach distance 124. Relative inclination less than 0.5 degrees. Closest approach distance now 41 kilometers. We're going a bit high on the apoapsis. I was so focused on the target, I wasn't really making a good orbit. Okay, I'm gonna ditch this stage. Not the best timing ever. Okay. And we're going to have some time to plot this because we've got 12 minutes to apoapsis and the apoapsis is quite high. So, let's get to work. Well, that looks pretty darn close, but I can't go with looks. Um, I would really like numbers. Anyway, it would have been nice to use that stage for all this, but we'll go with this. 
extending these panels, which we can't retract, remember. Okay, selling fuel down. Throttle up. And ignition. Piece of debris floating away safely. Okay, we'll have to do the rest of our CS to be safe. Let's get the CO2 scrubber online and maybe a fuel cell. Okay, we're recharging now. Let's deactivate the fuel cell. Well, okay, it looks like we need the fuel cell to recharge, so we'll keep that on. Alright, currently over Florida. Closing to within 5 kilometers. Really using a lot more fuel than I should. We'll cut our velocity on this side and then move on to the other side to do the docking. So now it's all RCS. Where's our target? There it is. And it looks like we should kill some velocity in this direction. Off, off, off. Just stabilize. Forward. Well, it doesn't seem like I can get closer than 140 meters for some reason. Okay, and then engaging time warp causes a leap. Okay, well, we've got a really close approach, but other side of the mission is not lined up at all. Really want it lined up so we don't have to do any dances. Well, we are approaching sort of carefully. Tough to say. Well, uh, MechJab seems convinced that we're going to get close. Oh wait, as we slow down it's not quite so confident. Okay, we no longer have a prograde vector because, well, we're going so slow with respect to the target. It's not going to show it. Once again, will we have reason to thank the inventor of docking port magnetism? Probably. Oh boy, oh boy, it's wandering away. The target marker. No target marker, don't wander. Why is it wandering? It seems like the docking port's right in front of me. Oh, please, oh. That's... Here we go with the dreaded dance of death, or docking dismay, something like that. Dance of docking dismay, that's what we're gonna call it. Using the negative parallel thing, which is a nice thing to use, is tough because um, Smart ASS wants to wiggle so much. Well, is it a good day for space docking enthusiasts? Maybe? Well, they bumped. I thought they were going to connect. Um, okay, they connected. Phew. I thought there was going to be a problem with the docking port or something. All right. We're, we're all together now. Uh, let's shut that off. Um, let's shut down these engines. Okay. And then control from the right direction. Control from here. We have 3,299 meters per second to work with with the RL-10s, which should be enough to transfer us to the moon. So let me make the plot. I don't think I can finish that in this episode, so that will have to happen in the next episode. But let me plot it out and show you what I've got. Okay, well, we're going to try and uh, do a pseudo 
free return trajectory kind of thing. Um, though that's a wicked sort of resulting orbit. But we're coming around the right way around the moon. And I flattened it out just a little bit because it, it had a lot of inclination to it. But this allows us to hit quite a, quite a few possible places. But we're going to be hitting the far side of the moon uh, from Earth because that's the lit portion right now. The It is apparently new moon. So... Yeah, we won't be... The communication situation might be a little bit choppy. We'll see. We've got other satellites around the moon helping out, but... Uh, remember, we've got a module... The the stage that's supposed to return us uh, is independently controlled. It's not... doesn't have a Kerbal, right? So we'll have to see about that. Anyway, but this is the plan. And we'll get to 80 kilometers with a burn of 3,135 meters per second, which is well within what we've got in the RL-10 stage. So, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.